Let's play a game where we make predictions about the values of expressions, but without actually interpreting those expressions. So we'll start out with an easy one. What is the value of this expression plus 1, 2? Without running interp in your Dr. Racket now. If you said 0, well, no, that's the wrong answer. If you said 42, that's wrong also. The answer we were looking for was 3. All right, let's try another one. How about the value of this expression? Curly brace plus lambda 17, 8, close curly brace. What's the value of that without running your interpreter? If you said error, that's not the answer I'm looking for because that's not a value. In fact, this is a trick question because plus lambda 17, 8 is not an expression in any variant of curly that we've, uh, that we've studied so far. So it doesn't make sense to say what is the value of this expression. It's not even an expression. Okay, if we're going to play this game, we better be clear about the grammar then. So I'm going to use this richer grammar than we usually use for curly. We will allow numbers. We'll also allow booleans, true and false. We'll have plus and times as usual, but also an equality operator that checks whether two numbers are equal and returns a, a true or false. We will have identifiers so we can refer to arguments. We'll have lambda, and we're going to allow any number of arguments to our lambdas. And so our application form has a function expression and then any number of argument expressions. And we'll have if, which relies on Booleans for the test, and then uses a, has a then and else expression, as usual. So with that grammar, here's our question again. Without running interp or parse or anything, is this an expression? If you said no, that's not the right answer, because according to our grammar, this is an expression. We can match it up. We can see that uh, these outer curly braces work if we match it up with the application form. And the first expression is this lambda empty 1, and lambda empty is fine because we've said any number of arguments, and that includes zero arguments. 1 and 7, meanwhile, are clearly expressions, and so it all works out with the grammar we specified. This is an expression. So now, what is the value of that expression? It's an expression, so this is not a trick question. Uh, what is the value when you run it? I think I heard some of you say 1. The answer is 1 because we call this function and return the function's result, which is 1. But some of you were unhappy with that uh, because you don't think that passing one argument should be allowed to a function that takes zero arguments. And you know, I'm kind of on your side, actually. We haven't pinned down the interpreter, uh, but again, the game is not to run the interpreter. The game is to say what expressions are allowed and then what kind of values will they produce. Uh, and we don't think this should be allowed, even though it fits in the grammar. So let's say, let's rule this out by saying that this is an expression, but it's an ill-formed expression. Right? And it's ill-formed because when you have this lambda form after this open curly brace, that it should only be used with zero arguments when it has uh, zero expected arguments. Okay? So this is an ill-formed expression. Uh, and let's agree that we won't even try to ask what is the value of an ill-formed expression. Okay, so let's try again. What is the value of the following expression? We all agree that it's a trick question. There is no value of this expression because it's ill-formed. How about this expression? Plus, and then we've got a function that takes no arguments and return 1, and 8. Well, here again, it's an expression and it's well-formed because we haven't ruled it out yet. Right? It's an expression because it fits our grammar. It's not ill-formed because we said ill-formed ones are the ones that you have a lambda with zero arguments and you apply it to one argument. So let's keep putting things in the ill-formed bucket so that we can stop talking about what happens to them. Okay, So um, we don't want to say what has the value of this expression because it would produce an error if we run the interpreter. Uh, we're not going to run the interpreter. So let's agree that a lambda expression cannot be inside of a plus form because that's what went wrong here. Clearly, if you put a lambda right there inside of a plus form, that it would get an error in any reasonable interpreter, and we just want to rule that out. Okay, so this is ill-formed from now on. Is it a well-formed expression? No. So I won't ask about the value. Uh, let's look at the next one. Here's plus, and here we have a plus with a lambda inside, uh, but that lambda is applied to 7. It's the identity function applied to 7. We would expect to get a 7 back, and then the 7 can be added to 5 to get a 12. Now, is this ill-formed or well-formed right now? It really depends on what we meant by saying you can't put a lambda inside a plus. 
If we mean you can't put a lambda form anywhere inside of a plus, well, then this is ill-formed and we should not talk about its value. On the other hand, we feel like this should be okay. We know that interpreter, an interpreter should produce a 12 here. So let's agree on a definition of ill-formed that makes this okay. Let's say it's only bad if you have a lambda immediately inside of a plus, where it's clearly going to go wrong. Here's another example then. I've got lambdas. They're inside a plus, but they're not immediately inside a plus. And yet we can see again things are going to go wrong. Right? We get the identity function back uh, by applying it to the identity function. Uh, and then we try to add a function to 5. So um, we still haven't ruled this out as ill-formed. And so someone can ask what the value is. But we don't want to allow this either. So let's step, take a step back. Is it even possible to do what I'm trying to do? Is there a way to decide whether something is well-formed before you interpret it uh, so that we just don't even try to answer the questions of what the value is? Well, OK, if I phrase the question this way, then trivially there's an answer. Just reject all expressions. Just call them all ill-formed. Uh, and that solves the problem, because if you ask me, is this a well-formed expression, I say no, and I don't have to interpret. Technically. That's a valid answer, but that's not the one we're looking for. So let's ask a different question. Is it possible to define well-formed without actually running the program so that we reject up front any expression that will produce an error? And that we only reject the expressions that will produce an error? This turns out to be not possible. And it's the, the problem is our old friend, the halting problem. So imagine you have this expression where I'm trying to add 1 to the result of this if. And let's suppose we don't know exactly what the dot, dot, dot is, but it's something complicated. If that complicated thing produces true, then we'll return 1. If the complicated thing produces false, then we'll return the identity function. And so whether we get an error or uh, a 2 when we run this depends on what the dot, dot, dot does. And if we could figure out whether the dot, dot, dot returns true or false without actually running it, uh, then that would mean either that our language is trivial, and we know, as an extension of the lambda calculus, this is not a trivial language, and so it must be that we can't do that without actually running it. Okay? So there's no way to reject only the expressions that produce errors. We need a way out, and the way out is going to be to reject all of the expressions that produce errors, and also reject a few more. That turns out to be tractable, and that's what a type system does.